now I'm going to pin fit the wings of the chair. So we've already connected the back to the wings, so that's already stitched on. And I'm gonna make sure, again, that everything is in place. So as I'm pinning, the slipcover is gonna fit really well. If I start pulling this over too far and pinning it up here, the slipcover is not gonna fit properly. So always double check how everything's fitting and how your seams are lining up as you go. So this is the first seam where we're going to be using piping. And the reason why we're going to do that, as I've talked about piping before, is that we want to give the wing some structure and it also sort of outlines the detail. Like a, having a, a wing on a chair is a really beautiful detail and we want to accentuate that. So we're going to sort of trace it or outline it with the piping. Here's the finished side of the piping and here is the raw edge. So the slipcover right now is it's inside out, so all the raw edges are facing in the same direction. And I'm going to insert the piping in between the two layers of fabric. So we have the inside of the wing and the outside of the wing. And we just sort of make a little, a little piping sandwich here. And, oh, there's our train. <laughs> We just can't make a video without a train in it. <laughs> okay, so I've made like this little piping sandwich and then I'm gonna pin it maybe every inch and a half or so. You really do wanna be pretty generous with your pinning because especially as the slipcover gets bigger and more fitted, you're going to have to sort of pull it off of the chair. And if you only have a pin, you know, every once in a while, it's gonna all, um, it's gonna come apart a little bit easier and just make life more difficult for yourself. So as I'm going along, I'm checking to make sure this seam is staying in place, to make sure the back is staying in place, and I'm also checking the sides. Now, I have put a large quilting pin in the side just to hold it in place. And when you're pinning, you wanna make sure all of your pins are going in the same direction, um, just to make them easier to pull out, and you also want to make sure that they're all on the same side. So I don't want to be pinning on this side and then switch and start pinning on this side um, because then it's going to be um, a little bit more challenging as you're sewing to pull them out. Now when I'm pinning, I'm pinning um, in the direction that I'm going to sew. Um, I always refer to it as that I'm going to sew along the pin line. So where I'm pinning is actually where my stitches are going to go. Some people like to pin perpendicular to the direction that they're sewing. Um, I sort of, I like pinning in the same direction because I do have to remove them as I go, whereas if you pin on the perpendicular, you can just sew right over them. But I feel like it's, as I'm pinning it, it's a better representation of what the slipcover is going to look like, and it's also easier for me to follow. So that's just my method. That's the Marion method of pinning. Once I get to the curves here, we have sort of some excess fabric that we need to deal with. So I'm putting a couple of little pleats in it. Now remember, we're working inside out. So the direction that you do the pleat, it's going to be the opposite once you turn it around. So I want the fabric to, um, let's see, I want it to fold sort of downward um, when it's turned right side out. And the reason for that is I don't want to create like a little pocket that's going to collect dust. So if it sort of flaps over, it's not going to do that. It's just a little detail that looks, well, first of all, it makes the fabric fit better and it looks really sharp once the slip cover is done. And I wanted to show here that where I started the piping, um, there's going to be a little tail hanging out. And what this does is once we turn it um, right side out, this piping is just going to sort of disappear into the back of the chair. So you should have a little tail hanging on the outside like that. And then we'll put a pin in place. And then you want to sort of pull on it and make sure that corner is fitting nice and tight.
And now we have this part where the, the side panel of the wing is going to meet the back of the chair. And we have this little piece of piping here. And again, we're just going to kind of make it into a tail that's just going to disappear um, into the fabric. So we'll probably have it go down to... Do you see how in the original chair the piping goes down and disappears here? So that's just how we're going to make the slipcover. Um, so I'm going to pull this fabric down a little bit and sew down to this point. And then once we start pinning on the fabric for the arm, then we'll, we'll deal with how all this fits together. So now that we, we know that the piping is going to end here, I'm going to go ahead and cut off, leaving a little bit of excess so we have enough to, um, you know, let it end on the inside of the fabric. So pinning the arms here is, I think, probably one of the trickiest parts, but I always take comfort in the fact in that knowing, first of all, we're going to have a cushion here that's going to sort of help pull everything down. And usually you put a pillow on the back of the chair and that sort of, so it sort of hides the trickiest part. So we've got this fabric here that, that makes up the inside of the wing. And right now it's sort of being a little, a little ornery because it just the way the fabric's pulling. So we need to cut it just a little bit so that it lays nice and flat. So you want to work very slowly and carefully so you don't cut it too much. But do you see how just making that one cut has now made it so the fabric lays a little bit better? Um, and I'm also going to cut off this excess fabric here just to make everything a little bit easier to, to see and to pin. And we'll kind of cut fabric even more as we go along. Okay, and as we start pinning, I do have um, some of these large quilters pins here. I do have them stuck in the fabric that we're using for the arm in a few places just to make sure it doesn't shift too much. Okay, so same thing with this bit. We have sort of all of this extra fabric and it's making it so it bunches up. And that just makes it hard to pin so that it lays nice and flat. So I'm going to just very slowly and carefully cut some creases. We're not creases. I'm going to cut some slits into the fabric to make it lay flat. Now I have before gotten really carried away <laughs> while I'm doing this and then I make it so the piece of fabric is too small and I can't use it anymore. So just be be really careful as you go. Okay, and I've got a lot of extra fabric on this piece, so I'm going to cut that, cut that off too. Okay, so you see, before we even start pinning, that just cutting the fabric a little bit more, so it's a little more precise, has made it so that these pieces lay flat and are going to fit better together. And now we can start pinning it. When I'm pinning in a corner like this, I like to sort of pinch the fabric and push it back into the corner like this. And I'll maybe pull it down a few inches and then pull it out like this, pinching the fabric. Put a pin in here and then pin between these two pins in just a straight line. careful you don't cut your slip cover as you're cutting the excess fabric. I've done that too. I've done just about every, I've made just about every mistake there is to make. Okay, and now we have this, this piping that is coming down from the front of the wing and we need to sort of end it somewhere. So I'm going to follow, I'm taking sort of my cues from the chair itself and you see there's a piece of piping that runs down so I'm going to let my piping follow that same path. And so I need to cut my fabric a little bit here. So do that. OK, 
Okay, and then where the piping ends, I'm going to let it stick out like a tail so that it just sort of disappears into the slip cover. And as I pin along here, I'm sort of loosely following this line on the chair, making sure I don't pull the fabric too hard so I have enough in the front. And I'm making sure that I sort of pull this down so it's nice and tight. Okay, and then where the side meets the back, I'm going to go ahead and pin that together. So when I go onto the sewing machine, I'm going to sew this first and sort of take out a few pins and finish sewing this. And then I'm going to sew this so that we have a nice um, place where all these pieces of fabric meet. Okay, so here's the part where the two seams meet. So I'm gonna take out this pin so I can sew along here first. This is along the where the side and the back of the chair meet, and this is along sort of under the outside of the wing where we're gonna sew into the arm. So I've pulled that piece out. Now, as you're sewing slip covers, especially as they start getting larger and you have all this fabric, you want to always make sure that you're only sewing the two pieces of fabric that you actually want to sew. You don't want to get, you know, the arm of the chair stuck in the seat, which I have done that before, so it's not fun. You have to get your seam ripper out and everything. And I really have pinned sort of on the wrong side for me sewing, but that's all right. Okay, and now that I have this seam sewn, I'm going to come back and sew where the side meets the back. And I also like to go back through and sort of check over the tricky areas to make sure that my seams look good. You can even sort of open them up and make sure everything looks good. Now we're going to pin the seat on, or this is sort of what's under the, the seat cushion. And this is another part that I think is a little bit tricky, but again, the good news is you don't see it because it's under a cushion. We're just gonna take the two pieces of fabric and pin them into place. So it's pretty simple. Again, just like I did in the corners, I'm going to sort of push the fabric into place pinch it and pin it, and then pin between those two pins. So the seat is all sewn and all we have left to do is this front apron piece and the front of the arms and then we'll do the skirt and put the ties on sort of the finishing details but the body of the piece will be done. So we do want piping to run around the arm and again I'm sort of taking the cue from this chair and here's my length of piping and the piping does go all the way down to the bottom, and so that's what I'm going to do as well. Make So make sure I have enough there, and I'm gonna start it here. So I can cut it off there. And then I have just this little tiny piece for the front. Now this piece of fabric is not behaving very well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pin him in place right there.
And just to show, I make a total disaster when I'm slip covering. So if your workspace looks like this, just don't feel bad. So the last part that we're going to put on for the body of the slip cover is the, the apron front here. And so we're going to attach it to this edge, to the bottom of the arms, and also to the, the decking here, this sort of the, the bottom of the seat, and have it wrap around to meet the sides. got all this excess fabric I'm going to pinch it tight and pin along that so I'm going to cut and sew the fabric so that it's nice and fitted And you want to make sure as you're pinning these arms that you get the little um, piping tail that you get that pinned in because otherwise it's going to be hanging out in your slip cover. And if that does happen, like that's okay. Just use a seam ripper. Like you'll see it. It'll be very obvious when you turn it inside out that something that should be on the inside is sticking on the outside. And you can just use the seam ripper and tuck it inside and sew it again. So it's not a big problem, but it's nice if you can get it done right the first time. Now we're going to pin on the piece of piping that runs around the bottom of the chair. And for this, I'm just going to follow the bottom edge of the chair. And this is going to be the guide for where we're going to put the skirt on. We're just going to put a little pleated skirt on the bottom because I just like little pleated skirts on my slip covers. I think it's a nice, nice way to finish them off. So I still have this slip cover on inside out. So I'm going to pin the piping on um, the inside. And as I've said like eight times already, just make sure the raw edges are facing the same direction. And since I'm working on the back here and these are floppy still, I don't have the ribbon ties on yet, uh, I do have the two flaps pinned into place so that I know they're right where they're going to be once I put the ties on. We have this little tail of piping hanging out here and what this is just what I do again this is just the, the Marion method um, I'm sure there's some like really smart clever way to do it that I didn't think of but um, what I'm gonna do is just fold this tail around like this so it goes to the inside so here's what the outside will look like and I'm just gonna sew that in place and so I'll do that on the other end. So I'm just going to follow all around the bottom of the chair exactly in this fashion. because I perch them precariously on top of the arms of chairs that I'm working on as we pleat it. 
I've got music, Christmas music on. <laughs>